Okay, so we are discussing about user management in Salesforce. So let's go right ahead and launch our playground. I'm going to launch this admin cert playground here. I'm going to close this one. So now to manage users, go ahead and type users here in setup. Well, you know how to get to setup, right? Gear icon and then setup, which is this page, and then users and go to users. So this is a playground org, meaning we have a limited users. We can only add, I think, one more user and that's it. So let's click on edit here or let's even, yeah, let's click on edit before we add a new user. So this is an existing user on the playground. So let's head over back to the trailhead here. So let's talk about the username, the email address, and then user's first name and last name, the Salesforce license profile, and the role, which is an optional value. You can add a user without assigning them a role. Okay, key terms, usernames. Each user has both a username and an email address so if i go back here a username is a unique username across the entire salesforce platform so this is like an email address on a gmail platform for example if you use um, student at zone.io on this org on this org you cannot use the same username on any other org on the Salesforce platform. So this has to be unique, right? This is just simply an email address field. So it will receive notifications from Salesforce and so on and so forth. So the username has to be unique. Just remember that, all right? Let's move on. What about user licenses? So a user license determines what or which features the user can access in Salesforce. For example, you can allow users access to standard Salesforce features and chatter with a standard Salesforce license. But if you want to grant a user access to only some features, for example, just chatter, you can just give them a chatter free license. So for example, if we assigned Jimmy here, or we already set the user license. Once you created it, you can't change it. But if I hit cancel here and I create a new user, the user license, you can choose there, chatter free. So depending of what user license you use, what they can do once they are logged in into the Salesforce platform depends on their user license, okay? So let's uh, move on. Next up is profiles. So what are profiles? Profiles determine what users can do in Salesforce. So if I give an, an analogy of what the profile can be right now this is out of the box from from trailhead playground for example in a school environment you can create a student profile and a teacher profile you got it a, a student profile and a teacher profile so imagine a teacher you create a user and assign them a teacher profile when they log into Salesforce they will see everything as a teacher their user layout will be different than the student profile if you add another user and assign them as a student profile once they log in 
they can submit homework, right? They can see their class schedule and stuff like that. Stuff that student uh, will need to see and do. And for a teacher profile, when they are logged in, they can assign homework. They can assign grades. They can assign tests, schedule exams for the students. So it's totally different depending on the profile of the user. That's pretty simple to understand, right? So just remember profile, student profile or teacher profile. So you can assign users that profile depending on what they are doing in the Salesforce platform. Same thing with the business world, a manager profile and a staff profile. They will see different things, right? A sales staff and a support staff. They will see different thing. If a user is uh, belongs to the sales staff profile, when they log in, they can make sales calls, close deals, stuff like that. If a user is assigned the support profile, when they are logged in, they can create new support cases, answer to new support cases, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's pretty simple to understand, right? Let's move on. Now, what about roles? Roles determine what users can see based on where they are located in the role hierarchy. This belongs to, or it's talking about records, the actual records, all right? So back to our um, school example, the role of the principal of the school, right? If if a user is the principal, the headmaster or the headmistress of the school, they can see everything, for example, right? The headmaster can reschedule, uh, not reschedule, the headmaster can see all the records that belongs to all the teachers, okay? As a teacher, a teacher can only view all the students that belongs to the teacher. Okay, that's a role of a teacher. Okay, so if we switch to the business world, for example, a multinational company, you can set the role, say, a role of a manager of the North America region. So if a user is assigned a role of a manager of a North America region, they can see all the customers in North America. All customers in North America, they can see. If another user has a role of the um, Asian regional manager, this user can see all the customers in Asia. So, that's how role works. You got it? So that's how role works. Depending of what's the role of the user. And it is optional. You don't have to set a role. Okay. And an alias is basically just a short name to identify the user on list pages, reports, on other places where their entire name doesn't fit. By default, the alias is the first letter of, of the user name and the first four letter of their last name. Let's give an example of my user on the play uh, playground here. See, J Tans. So my, my first name is Jimmy and the four letter of the last name. So remember that format just in case it came out on the exam, the third exam. So that's an alias. Guidelines for adding users, username, each user must have a username that is unique across all Salesforce organizations. Remember that it's unique. The format of the username, users must have username in the format of an email address. So like this, jdo at domain.com. 
but they don't have to use real email address okay so it's just the format of an email address email users can have the same can have the, the same email address across organizations so email is just an email field it can be used across all organizations passwords are passwords login links is the login links once the once you um, set up the user salesforce will send out the login link so adding a new user is pretty straightforward i don't think i have to explain that important things is um, point six here select generate passwords and notify user via email so that when you create the user they will receive an email and they can activate their salesforce user and start to log in and use it so take user management on the go access to user management and setup isn't limited to the desktop you can do that on the mobile app this is also pretty straightforward here you can log in through the mobile app which i've shown you numerous time in my previous videos and um, yeah that's pretty much it oh this is also a good um, information uh, the trust status of your salesforce org so after you log into salesforce you see the overview page which shows the recent system status and recently viewed users you can also access this from trust.salesforce.com salesforce.com there so for example we are on na stands for north america one two three so our playground here is on the north america instance number one hundred and twenty three so system status you can click here well everything is green status the for salesforce.com you can check the status there so if i type na123 search my instance is green all is good so you can check that from trust.salesforce.com you can also freeze a user from anywhere well it's it's showing it how you can freeze them from the mobile app you can try that yourself and i will show you how to do it from the the um, desktop okay so for example you want to um, freeze this user just click on that username you can freeze the user once you freeze the user they will not be able to log in from anywhere it's frozen until you unfreeze them well you can't because that's a, a trailhead user and everything is is it's uh, used for for the trailhead so basically just click that button and they will get frozen and that's pretty much it all right so that's it about users if you uh, want to really really get it please replay the video a couple more times especially about profiles and about roles and yeah that's it so let's do the quiz together username must include a character a symbol and an emoji <laughs> be unique only with your within your no be in a format of an email yes username has to be in a format of an email okay it has to be unique across all platforms so this is wrong when you create a user you can add only one user at a time take a long lunch break because you've saved so much time generate new password and notify the user immediately replace you can't replace so this is the answer generate new password and notify the user immediately so you can also add user um, um, you know multiple users at once right from here if i go back to users and i go back here and add multiple users there the button okay 
So just go through this process and you can add multiple users at once. So you don't need, you don't have to add one user at a time. You can add multiple users at one go. All right, that's it. I will see you on the next section where we talk about control what your users can access. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself bada bing bada boom